And in the, in the previous class, which is uh, I think two weeks ago, we looked at this example, okay? So this is Puma 560, uh, the, the homogeneous transformation matrices for initial and final uh, poses are given here, okay? And so this is the figure showing that. So this is the initial pose, and this is the final pose, right? So what it, what it means is that uh, it, we want our end effector of this robot to be aligned with this coordinate frame at uh, tau equals to zero, right? Initial time, and then at final time, we want the end effector to be aligned with this coordinate frame. Okay, so these are various angles, and from inverse kinematics, uh, you have these values. So this is the uh, initial position, and this is the final position. And why there are, why it's a vector of six elements? Because this is for joint number one. This is joint two, joint three, joint four, joint five, joint six. And you have to design a four three four trajectory for joint number one. And the lift up position and set down positions are given. So if we, if you, if you look at um, the flow of trajectory planning, planning, right? So let me write here. Flow or steps. So the last one, so I don't want to put a number yet. So the last one would be uh, compute, right? The last one is that you have to compute. H1 of T, H2 of T, and uh, H3 of T. In, 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 a, in an actual application, this has to be done for all joints, right? So I'm just going to write here for, for all joints. So what is the step before this? Um, you have to compute perhaps the uh, initial positions, initial uh, lift off, set down and final position. So Calculate. Calculate theta zero. But well, you know that I think I need more space. So calculate theta zero. So what is theta zero? Theta zero is we have theta zero one. That means this is the initial position for joint number one. Initial position for joint number two. Up to initial position for um, the last joint n. So n is the degree of freedom, right? So similarly, you have to compute theta. 1. So what is theta 1? Theta 1 is the lift off position. So if we look at the nodes, so theta 1 here. So of course this graph refers to one particular join, but we know theta 1 um, will be a six element vector, right? So 1, 1, that means this is the lift off position for join number 1 lift off position for join number two and this is up to 
lift off position for the nth joint. Transpose. And we have to compute theta 2 as well and theta f. Okay. So before this, so of course, of once you have these different values of thetas, and uh, if you if you have set your own tau, right, the real time, then you can compute h1, h2, h3. But before this, what do we have to know, right? We have to um, determine determine the lift off and set down poses lift off lift off pose let's call this t1 and set down pose t2 And before this, we have to determine um, initial pose T0. So this is homogeneous transformation matrix and final pose. All right, so back to the question, right? So we are first given the uh, peak position orientations, position orientation or pose, right? T0, and the place uh, position orientation. So this is our initial pose, and this is the final pose, right? So this one is settle right determine initial pose and final pose so this is given next from here we go to the next step determine lift off pose and set down pose in the question so so this is the initial pose and the uh, final pose right so you know now where to start uh, positioning or what should be the initial configuration of the robot arm and what is the final configuration right next we have to know the lift off and the set down configurations but it's not given in the question you see but the question makes it makes things easier for us uh, because it it gives us the lift off position for joint number one and the set down position for joint number one so this step is skipped in the question and uh, it goes directly to this okay if you if you realize uh, from inverse kinematics the joint angles are given so that means all these are given for us right but in practical application you have to compute this using inverse kinematics using inverse kinematics right so we have learned this in the previous chapter right kinematics so of course uh, you can compute inverse kinematics in order to compute inverse kinematics or compute the joint angles using the inverse kinematics you know you have to know the poses right so once you have you know the four required poses you can compute the four sets of joint angles using inverse kinematics and then from here you can compute the the trajectory the 434 trajectory okay so these are the flow or the steps that you require to take that we are required to take in trajectory planning okay first you have to know 
you have to decide the initial pose, final pose. Next, determine the lift off pose and the set down pose. And using these two information, step one and step two, you can compute theta zero, theta one, theta two, and theta f using inverse kinematics. And once you know that, you can compute h1, h2, h3. Okay? Are we good? All right. Um, but the, the question says you only have to design for joint number one, all right? So, uh, once again, in the step, this one, in step number three, you have six element vectors, right? For Puma 560, for example, uh, theta zero, you would have six elements and so on. And you have to compute H1, H2, H3 for all joints. And the question says only one, um, only for one, one joint. Okay, uh, and we, I have shown how to compute this. It's, it's pretty straightforward because uh, most of the terms would be zero. All right, and um, let's see how you can simulate this using uh, MATLAB. All right, so uh, after this, this session, I would upload uh, a number of files on e-learning, probably three files, one, two, three, inverse underscore kinematics dot M, uh, tra tra trajectory underscore function, or traj under func dot M, and trajectory underscore animation underscore page 13 dot M. Okay, I'll upload on e-learning. So if you have time, uh, you can try this on your own. Okay, but uh, remember, I will not test you uh, on this in any exam or test. Okay, so MATLAB will not be in your exam. So let's open this. I think some part of this I've shown you earlier. So I hope you can see my, the MATLAB, the MATLAB uh, file here. So this is a uh, M file, okay? How do you know it's M file? Because uh, the extension is .m. Um, and if you use this percentage, this percentage sign, if you use two of this, uh, it will become a segment. Right, so the good thing about a segment, see here, right, this is my first segment. I use double percentage uh, sign and I write animation page. So this is my first segment. Then I have my second segment. So the way you uh, segmentize your code is by using double percentage sign. Okay. But the good thing about this is that uh, you can have your, you can uh, have your codes uh, a bit structured, I would say, right? And and you can even execute your code section by section by clicking run section. So for example, if I click on this segment, right? Or section, they call it. And if I run section, it will not run the whole script, but it will only execute this particular section and not this one. The rest will not be executed. On the other hand, if I click run here, it will execute the whole script, the whole file. Okay, so let's try to run section. So this is my, uh, this is the result. That, that I get by running this section. As we can see, uh, we have a robot, right? A robot arm is called Puma 560, okay? And I have four coordinate frames here, five coordinate frames. So this coordinate frame is drawn by default, all right? So I did not, I did not explicitly write uh, or draw this coordinate frame, but this four coordinate frames, I ex explicitly uh, drew it. All right, so we have coordinate frame zero here. So this is the initial pose. Then I have coordinate frame, uh, I label it as zero A. I should have labeled it two, right? Uh, one, right? Two, um, so that is tally, it tallies with our notes, a one, right? Zero, one, two, F. Okay, I can change it. 
So the way I change it is uh, okay. Anyway, let's let's um, let me let me explain this first, and then later I'll change it. So you have the red one, zero and F, the final uh, initial and final poses, and I have the green one. So this should supposed to be. Let me try to zoom in. So this is the initial pose, and this is my uh, lift off pose. So remember, what is the definition of lift off position, right? What is lift off position? Lift off position is a position normal or perpendicular to uh, the initial position. So you can imagine uh, your gripper or any factor is up here, right? pointing in the Z direction so you want your this Z to be aligned with Z0 and then it moves up in a normal direction because we don't want the any factor to hit any fixture or any other object okay, we want it to move it in a straight line away from uh, this pose and uh, we have defined it to be here so it looks nice it looks perpendicular and or normal to this surface right the x x0 y0 plane right it is perpendicular to it so this is what we want okay so let's look at the code um, so this command here clear all it means it will clear every everything on my workspace so any variable that you declare or you define will appear on the workspace. So MATLAB knows what those variables are or what those uh, quantities are. But if you clear, that means you, you start fresh, right? You clear everything. Uh, CLC, it's a, it's a command to clear your command window. Okay. You don't have to do it, but if you want to... Um, have a nice clean command window for whatever reason uh, you can just type CLC so first step we want to build our Puma 560 robot so in the toolbox there are a number of robots already but just to uh, for continuity right just because I want to use the robot that we have in our that we have been using from chapter 2 or 3 maybe right uh, Puma 560 so uh, here I built the robot from scratch so if you look at uh, chapter the chapter on kinematics robot kinematics so you can find the the DH parameters that that are little uh, that are listed there is exactly the same as this one okay maybe I can show you Chapter 4, sorry. So chapter 4, we talked about Puma 560 a lot. So this is the DH parameters, right? So I hope you know, you remember what are DH parameters. So DH parameters, if you forgot, these are just the um, parameters that define the position and orientation of one coordinate frame with respect to another coordinate frame. Okay, so let's let me try to oops. Okay, so if you if you notice, uh, this is my D, right? Look at the DI column, so zero one four nine point zero nine. So this one, right? Zero uh, one four nine point zero nine zero four three three is exactly as this, right? And the AV vector is my AI column. Okay. So we are just uh, defining or building our robot object. So and the function that you call is serial link, and then you give in all this. Uh, I think I've explained this before. And you can name your robot, right? So I name my robot as Puma 560, and that's why you saw uh, the label on the plot. See? So the plot here. 
and then um, so in order to plot the robot arm so in order to plot this right in order to plot this figure you have to give in the joint angle for every joint or the angle for every joint right so I define theta 0 to be 0 0 0 0 0 0 so it has six elements because we have six joints okay we have six joints therefore you give six values for the joint angles and then you call puma dot plot why puma is because that's the name of the object a robot object that we have defined so this one is up to you you can call it puma you can call it whatever but then you have to use the same object name whenever you call plot so puma dot plot and you give in the value of the theta you can specify the uh, default angle okay so when it when it plots how you want the uh, the angle the view to be right you want it to be like this like this or up to you right so you can specify it by calling view and you give some some values here and uh, probably you know hold on is uh, a fun a command such that whenever you plot something new uh, matlab will not erase the previous plot or if you yeah if you if you don't have this uh, then matlab will erase everything and then plot on top uh, one by one fresh or new so you will lose everything that is that are plotted uh, before anyway you can experiment yourself by by deleting this right or commenting out so the way you comment out is by using single percentage sign right so this is the uh, homogeneous transformation matrix uh, sorry uh, yeah uh, HTM homogeneous transformation matrix for initial pose right it should be initial pose uh, where do I get this from from the question from the example right so look at this t0 is, is, is here so 0 minus 1 0 minus 500 and so on so you have to uh, if you're not familiar with uh, matrix uh, declaration or, or definition in MATLAB so you have to use this um, I don't know what it's called, semicolon, right? You have to use this semicolon to separate uh, the to sep to to separate the rows or to define the rows, okay? So whenever so this is the first row. And whenever you have the semicolon, MATLAB knows that you are whatever comes after that is the second row, and so on, right? And uh, dot dot dot. In the previous version of MATLAB, you have to you have to have everything in one line. But if you want to make it more readable, for example, if you have a matrix, if you declare everything in one line, perhaps it will be confusing. So uh, my personal taste is to show it as it is in multiple rows like this, right? So uh, you can have semicolon dot 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 all right never mind okay and then um i i declare the uh, lift opposition okay as you can see my lift opposition from the figure the orientation is exactly the same right if you have any question please ask me uh, if you if you compare this is the initial position okay please uh, let me let me just replot this so if you notice you can see I, I plotted 0a the, the green coordinate frame which is the lift off pose I plotted it as uh, 0a and this is not the same as our notes so let me change that so the way you change it the way you label your coordinate frame is here so th this is the the matrix of the poses right the homogeneous transformation matrix and in order to plot the coordinate frame 
you need to call the tr plot function or command right and you have to give in the um, the matrix you can name it so this is how you name the, your coordinate frame so remember it was 0a right it should have been uh, 1 and this is should have been 2 okay you can specify the length of the axis, uh, the color. If you notice, it was uh, some was some were green and and red because I've defined it to be so. You can specify the thickness of the the axis and the font size. So I've remained I read re, I've renamed it to uh, one and two. So zero one two F. Let's see. Yep, as you can see here, right? I'm zooming in. Okay, so this is the uh, the the initial pose and this is the lift off pose and if you notice uh, the orientation is the same right so z0 is pointing in the same direction as z1 and so on but the position is different so if you have the initial pose you can easily compute the lift off pose by by doing this so if you if you if you analyze uh, this line on your own you will realize that uh, I have the first row to be the same as this the second row to be the same and the third row to be the same because like I like I like, like I've explained uh, the orientation is the same, right? The only difference is the position. And as you know from chapter 2, the first three columns are, or should I say, uh, the, the, the top left 3x3 three three matrix represents the orientation of the coordinate frame. Yeah, and the last column or the top uh, three by one vector on the left represents the position of the coordinate frame, right? So this is why I we take exactly the same first row, second row, and the third row, but the last row, which represents the position, we have to change a bit. So uh, the way I, I've written here is that uh, we take this minus 100 of this one. Okay, so you can you can uh, you can investigate why why I've done this as as it is. So this this equation shows that my lift of pose or the position of the lift off um, coordinate frame is this one minus 100 of this vector right here okay or in other words the distance between the initial position and the lift of position is 100 so this length here is 100 right so you can you can uh, find out why I've done this way okay and uh, this is the final pose and this is the set down pose so again it's the same right so in the file in the set down pose where's this this is the So this is the final pose and this is the set down pose. 
Okay, again, the orientation is the same. The, the orientation of this and this is the same, but the position is different. So how do we define a homogeneous transformation matrix uh, so that it will be like this, as shown here? So the way we do it is, as before, the first uh, the first column of T2, you know, the set down pose, is the same as the final pose. Similarly, is the the second column is the same, third column is the same as well because the orientation is the same, but the position, the position of the set down uh, coordinate frame is this number here or this vector here minus 100 multiply the third column. So what that means is the distance between uh, the position, uh, the uh, final position and the set down position on this length right here is 100. It doesn't have to be 100, you know that, right? It depends on the application. It, it depends how far you want your uh, lift off or set down position from the final one. All right. So, and then uh, you you would send, you have to supply or you have to give uh, the matrices into uh, in TR plot and um, you will get these plots, All right? One, two, three, four. Next, in the code, you have to do inverse kinematics, right? If you remember our steps. So now you, we have uh, initial pose, final pose, lift off pose, and set down pose. Right? T1 we computed from T0. T2 we computed from TF. Okay? Uh, the third step, you have to use inverse kinematics and compute the joint angles. Right. Uh, this one has already been computed. So how did I compute this? I compute this using this file, inverse kinematics. So you can, I will upload this on e-learning later, and you can um, see how it works. It's pretty straightforward. You have to just give in some matrices, and these values here, arm, elbow, wrist, and it will compute. And uh, of course, in your syllabus, you only learned or well, in class, you only learned to compute theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. Uh, but you know, in reality, we have to compute all six angles, right? All six values. So this is this has been already computed. So we got theta 0 from T0, of course, right? Uh, we got theta 0A from T0A and so on. So now this is these are the joint angles in radians, right? So initially, you want the configuration to be robot of the robot to be uh, given by these joint angles, and finally, right when the the trajectory ends, you want the robot arm to have this configuration. Let's go back to the question. The question says. Uh, design a 434 trajectory for join 1. So, so this is join 1, right? So this is the value for join 1, 2.1438. So you want, you have to de design, you have to compute the trajectory where the initial value of join number 1 here is 2.1438 and the lift of position for join number one is again 2.1438 the set down position of join number one you want it to be minus 0 0.277 and then uh, the final position to be minus 0 0.2337 but the question has made things easier right like I said because it has already given you uh, the lift off position 2.1438 this one right so this one we have computed 
uh, but the question gave you already all right and the question also says that the set down position is minus 0 0.277 this one all right so uh, if you realize when we did this uh, when we computed this so we only have to rely on these four values here in the first the first element of every vector because we are required to design the trajectory for joint number one all right any questions so far you have been very quiet feels like i'm talking to myself Alright, not sure if you guys are listening or you guys are away from the screen. I wouldn't know. But I know some of you might do that. If I was a student, I would do that as well. Okay. Oh, uh, Jerry said, oh, we are here. Alright, good. Good. Good to know. Digesting the knowledge. Alright, good. So anytime, anytime you have question, you have to please ask me either today or some other time. Okay. And I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't mind at all to repeat my explanation okay you just need to ask in class it's easy right when I when I teach you uh, face to face I can see your face reaction you know and then I can ask you a question and if you don't understand I can explain again but in online it's difficult I cannot see your face and and sometimes we have connection problem right you might you might hear what i say maybe five seconds later and so it's difficult for me to teach um, but we can still do this um, but i need your i need your cooperation to ask me questions okay anyway um so so we are on the third second segment here a third segment right trajectory planning so this is where we actually compute the h1 h2 h3 so so if you look at let's let's run this simulation first right and then i will then you can see what's happening So it starts from the home position. So this is angle 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. It goes to the initial position. So this is one configuration. And then we have, and then it goes to the lift off. Now it goes to set down. And finally goes to the final configuration. So if you, if you still haven't realized uh, what, what, what is a configuration, right? So we call this a configuration. When a robot is in a particular position orientation like this, so this is one configuration. Of course, in order to have this configuration, you need the joint angles, right? Okay. So this is this config. Uh, or if I if I would put the word in a in a sentence, I would say um, this configuration of the robot is enabled by. By these joint angles, right? The last one. Yeah. So you have to know the difference between joint angles and configuration. So joint angle is just the angle of every joint. Uh, and configuration is how the robot turns up. So this is one configuration or final configuration. I also use the term uh, the pose of the end effector. You know that, right? So, uh, so this coordinate frame here ref refers to the and effectors pose and what is pose pose is position and orientation all right so as you, as you saw the robot starts from initial uh, it starts from home position where the joint angles are zero 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 this is home it goes to initial position as in the question initial pose this is lift off pose, set down pose, final pose. All right. So we uh, we have 
so far we have defined the initial pose by using htm lift off pose set down pose and final pose we have computed the required joint angles for every configuration for all four configurations right using inverse kinematics and now we have to compute the trajectory so in the script this part here as the comment implies or shows first trajectory from home to initial uh, configuration so this part here first i compute the trajectory from a uh, home to uh, initial pose or configuration and the second trajectory from in from initial pose to final pose okay but of course the question just asks you to do this right the question just asks you to do the this part which means that the robot has to go to the the, the robot has to start from initial pose it goes to the final pose but to to have a better animation i made two two different trajectories all right so um sorry so ultimately uh we just call this function right at the end at the end of this segment i just call trudge underscore funk so this is a function that i wrote that i will upload so it's a different file okay so in matlab you you can um, define a function in a different file for i don't know for clarity or for to make it less messy so i have this function here i will not open this so in this function in this file this is where we compute the trajectory okay and from my main script i just call it all right so i just call uh, that that function but i have to give in some values right i have to give him tau zero what is tau zero if you remember tau zero is the initial is the time at initial position right let me open the notes tau zero real time at initial position i have to give tau one tau two tau three uh, this is yeah the sorry for the for the the notation right so this is uh, initial time uh, this is tau zero tau one tau two and tau f right so tau three here refers to tau f then uh, i also have to give in um, the initial position lift off position set down position and final position to my function and that function will return uh the uh it will return a list of angle joint angles so if we look at h1 what is h1 oh it's not here oh it's here h1 so what the function returns is a huge vector okay so the first row is the because we want to plot the animation right the way the way the uh, the function of plotting works if you just give one set of joint angle you have a you have a let me show you okay for this one for example right so i call plot but i just give one set so this is one set right why i call it one set because this is joint angle or angle for joint one this is joint angle two up to joint angle six that's one set if i call plot i'll just have a static image of the robot like this it doesn't move if you want the robot to move you have to provide many of these sets okay so this is that means uh, you have to give uh, many rows of this set this is one row row this is just one row 
So if you have 10 rows of different values, then you can see the robot moving. But what it does is actually it, it goes to these various positions and then it renders, right? So when it, when it renders, it, you have a smooth motion. So uh, H1, which is, oops, what happened? Oh, it, it, it deleted everything. Okay, never mind. Let me just run it again. So H1 that we receive from calling that function will give us a matrix where every row represents a configuration of the robot arm. So let's see what's the size of H1. So H1, I have 61 rows. So from the initial configuration to the final configuration, uh, I have 61 points that the robot moves. And when it renders, you can see a, a nice animation, nice smooth animation. Okay. So if you want to see H1, so this is the uh, initial, uh, the ini the home position, or in other words, this is the initial position, and the last one is the final position. And somewhere in between, we have the lift off position, we have the set down position, and and every other position in between those four positions. All right. Anyway. Um, so we do the same of course you have to specify some time some step size and so on you don't have to go deep into this and uh, so like I said this is from home to the initial configuration and the second trajectory is from the uh, initial configuration to the final configuration and again you call the plot function right see plot but for now, you don't just give one set, you give H1 and H2. So you have like 61 plus 61 sets of joint angles. And when, you, when it plots, you will see a, a smooth motion. All right, that's about it. I don't want to confuse you more with my lengthy explanation. So, uh, if you want to, if you want to, um, I would, I would strongly suggest you to go through this. First, you you run this script. Make sure you can run. So you just have to run this file, okay? And this file, tra trajectory underscore animation underscore page thirteen. Uh, it uses a number of other files, like I said, right? Uh, it uses uh, well, you need you need the inverse kinematics dot m to compute this. If you if you have new uh, configuration that you want to compute, then you can call it. You can use it to generate this. If you if you're not interested, then you don't have to use inverse kinematics because I've already taken the values uh, from running inverse underscore kinematics. Uh, but it does use Trage underscore func in order to generate the the many sets of joint angle values. Okay, so I will upload three files on e-learning. This one, this one, and this one. So you just run this one and make sure you have uh, this file as well in the same folder. And then you will be see the animation okay so and then if you want to uh, and I, I urge you to play around with understand what's happening follow my explanation and you can change uh, values as needed maybe you can try the next example this example so we have two examples right I've shown you the computation for one example and uh, you can try this example as well and change values in the script as needed and then run it and uh, I think uh, you will, it will assist you to better understand this topic okay uh, so that's all from me it has been one hour I think so do you have any question you want to ask me if there are no questions then um, 
that's all for today. I will we'll talk again on Thursday. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you.